Hello everybody, this is Yoko's Anime Reactions, and, um, I'm gonna do some more book readings. I managed to get three yesterday, which is very, very surprising for me, since usually one will be very taxing on my throat. And maybe I was just feeling good that day, I don't know. Well, anyway, this is gonna be part two for my Konosuba reading. I figure I get one of those out. And I think this is where I last left off. Hang on. There we go. Alright. Alright. Good work, everyone. That's it for today. Here, come and get your pay. Thank you, sir. Another good day of work, sir. Woo! Work! Who says, whoa, work? <laughs> Who's happy to work? At the foreman's announcement of the end of the workday, Aqua and I each offered a word of thanks and a bow of the head. Okay, everyone, I said, see you tomorrow. Woo, tomorrow! Aqua Yoko echoed as I said goodbye to the other workers. Right, good work. And tomorrow is another day. With the others' voices still in our ears, Aqua and I walked off the site. Phew, another day's work finished. Even I could hardly believe I was once a... Hikikomori. Hikikomori. I'm guessing that's like a shut-in otaku or something like that it's supposed to be. Let me know in the comments. Aqua and I headed for the town's largest public bath, clutching our day's wages. The baths here were more or less the same as the one in Japan. Was in Japan. The entry fee was maybe a bit higher compared to the average wage, but a hot bath after a long day of work was something I couldn't let fail, fall by the wayside, even if it was just a little expensive. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. I sank into the steaming bath up to my shoulders, letting the water wash away the day's fatigue. This world looked a little bit like the Middle Ages, and I'd always assumed baths would be a luxury in a fantasy world, but apparently I'd been wrong. Well, then again, there is an, a water goddess, so I mean, water will probably be a little more plentiful than, but then, you know, normal. Aqua, and thank goodness, Aqua left the bath and waited for me at the entrance. I guess it's not very chivalrous to make a woman wait while you finish soaking, but then again, maybe that's just, just a bath-loving Japanese person for you. What do you want to eat today? I want a smoked lizard burger and a nice cold crimson neroid. Neroid? Is that alcohol? Oh god, a smoked lizard burger. Oh, what the heck does that taste like? Kind of want to know, yeah, kind of not. Yeah, I'd like some meat too. Well, how about we get the guy at the end to whip us up a couple of his smoked lizard hamburger combo meals? No objections. I probably wouldn't object too if it was something. I mean, hello, you never know what you're going to have here. Aqua and I wolfed down our meals, and then with nothing special to do, we went back to the stable we were staying at. I picked the hay that smelled the least like horse poop to make my bed and lay right down. Aqua was curled up nearby as though it was the most natural thing in the world. Okay, good night. Night. Man, we really did some work today. And so I began to drift off into a deep, satisfied sleep. Wait, hold a minute! I bolted upright. What's wrong? Did you forget to use the toilet before bed? It's dark outside. Want me to go with you? No, that's not it. Why are we doing manual labor every day? Yes, Aqua and I had spent every day of the last two weeks working on an expansion to the city wall, i.e. doing construction work. This was a far cry from the adventuring I had expected when I came here. Come to think of it, how had Aqua adapted so un uncomplainingly complainingly to this life? She's a goddess, isn't she? Well, it's because if you want to eat, you have to work. Don't you like construction? Sheesh, this is why you're a hicky neat. You couldn't haunt goods in the shopping district if you'd rather. That's not the point. I want, I came here for heart-pounding battles with monsters, okay? I thought the Demon King's invasion was threatening this place, but you couldn't find a more peaceful world? There's no demons, there's hardly any kings. What did we come here for? Our voices got louder as our tempers flared until we heard shouts nearby. Hey, you, shut up. People are trying to sleep. Oh, sorry, so sorry. Novice adventurers are poor, okay? They don't have the money for a room at the inn every night. Unless they pull their, usually they pull their resources with other adventurers and sleep in one big dormitory-style room. But right now, all we could afford to rent was a haystack in the stables. Yeah, definitely not living up to how I had envisioned the adventuring life in a fantasy world. Staying at the inn was sort of like if you slept in a hotel every night back in Japan. Not a lifestyle for those without a steady income, like us, for example. Video games normally feature some simple star requests, like harvesting herbs or get hunting some monsters near town. No such thing here. Plus, monsters don't just spew money when you defeat them either. Great. Yeah, well, that made sense. It's not a fantasy game. It's, it's an actual world. 
The monsters that lived in the forest near town had been wiped out long ago, and who'd pay money for someone to gather herbs in a perfectly peaceful forest? No one, obviously. Unless you couldn't get, unless you were, like, elderly and you couldn't get out there yourself, in which case, yes, you would, but any normal person, no. Even children left the town's walls with impunity. There was a guard at the gate, sure, but not the kind who'd locks everything down so tight an ant could hardly get in. The forest wasn't big enough to be that worrisome. If anything dangerous showed up, the people just went out and got rid of it. I guess it made sense when you thought about it, but it was all a bit too real-worldy for my liking. In a game, a fresh-faced adventurer could go out into the woods, spend half a day picking easily distinguishable plants and herbs, and make enough money to pay for three square meals and a soft bed, too. But when in real life, has there ever been such an easy money? Think about it. Even in rich country like Japan, have you ever met a laborer who spends every day of his life in a decent hotel? Minimum wage? Labor laws? What are those? Are they tasty? Welcome to your RPG fantasy. I, I know all this. This is the farthest town from the Dean King's castle. He'd never bother attacking all the way out here. Especially a town with nothing but greenborns. Or greenhorns. So, Kazuma, you're telling me you want me to want to go out on a real adventure before you've even gotten any gear together? In the face of Aqua's blunt analysis, there was nothing I could say. It was true. Aqua and I lacked even the most basic provisions for adventuring. We'd taken our nice, safe construction jobs. It helped us having up enough to buy some equipment. I'm getting pretty tired of construction. I didn't come all the way to a land of swords and sorcery just to work with my hands. I came here to adventure. No computers or game consoles needed. I was sent here to drive out the Demon King, wasn't I? For a moment, Aqua looked at me as though she couldn't understand what I was talking about. Then she exclaimed, Oh, that's right! We did mean to do something like that, didn't we? I got so caught up in the joy of work that I completely forgot. Joy of work? Aqua? Good lord, what the heck is up with her? But if you don't take out the Demon King, I can't go home, can I? Wait, if you enjoy working, would you want to go home at this point? I was a bit taken aback by her words until I recalled the receptionist's remarks that Aqua's intelligence stat was below average. Yeah. Fine, let's go take him out. You got me with you now, got me with you, so we'll be fine. You can count on me. I got a bad feeling about this. But I guess you are a goddess. Alright, it's up to you. Tomorrow we'll get the cheapest equipment we can find and then start working on our levels. Just leave it to me. I thought I told you to shut up. Don't make me come over there. Sorry, pardon us. Even as we apologized to the other adventurer, my heart was dancing in my chest and soon I was asleep. There wasn't a cloud in the bright blue sky. Ah, help me, Aqua, help me! <laughs> this, is a this is great, Kazuma, your face is so red, the tears, the desperation, I love it! Right, I'll bury her in the ground on my way home. Even as I applied to leave Aqua in the dirt, I ran around screaming for her help as the giant toad, a massive frog-like monster, chased me. We were in the vast field surrounding the town. This is where this was where grabbing a quest at the guild had gotten us. I had a short sword, the most minimal of weaponry. Aqua, for her part, had said some dumb thing about how a guy is waving a sword just wouldn't look right, and so she was currently without any weapon at all. Instead, she ga gaily watched the toad chase me around. Uh, hello? I think an archpriest would be able to have even a staff? I guess you can't underestimate your enemy even when he's a frog. These frogs, sorry, toads, were bigger than cows. During mating season, they needed strength to lay their eggs and so would migrate to human towns where there was plenty of food, as in the local farmer's goats, which the toads would swallow whole. Feel bad for the goats. Imagine getting swallowed up by a toad. Then again, I think Aqua and the others kind of had this um, experience in a moment. Since Aqua and I hardly weighed more than a couple of goats ourselves, we were both pretty concerned by this revelation. As a matter of fact, it turned out that every year, around giant tote mating season, a number of farmers and even children would go missing from the town. Oh, great. On the outside, these monsters looked like just, just like huge frogs, but they were far more dangerous than the weaklings that had been cleared out of the area so long ago. Incidentally, their meat, while a little tough, was light and mild tasting and was considered a delicacy. We'd heard that their thick layers of fat protected them from physical attacks. Then again, we'd also heard that because giant totes hate metal, if you wore even just a tiny bit of armor, you'd avoid getting eaten, so they were hard, so, weren't so hard to deal with after all. That's why experienced adventurers enjoyed hunting them. We, however... Aqua! Aqua, don't just stand there laughing! Help me! Maybe if you could start by showing me a bit of respect. Lady Aqua! 
I'd get her later, bury her up to her neck, and leave her there. She knew how scary it was to be at the mercy of a giant toad. Nearly in tears, I glanced back at the creature pursuing me, but it had turned away from me. It was looking at... Well, all right, I guess I have to help you out. Then you hickey neat. What the heck is a hickey neat? Are they talking about a hickey hickey komori? Is that what they're talking about? Why are they saying hickey neat? I don't get it. In return, I expect you to worship me starting tomorrow. When we get back to town, you have to join the Axe at church and pray to me three times a day. At meals, if I ask for something on your plate, you have to give it to me without complaint. And, ugh! Aqua and all her self aggrandizing suddenly vanished. The giant toad that had been chasing me had stopped moving. From one corner of its mouth, something blue was sprouting. It was, Aqua, hey, don't you dare get eaten! Aqua's leg hung at the side of the frog's mouth, shaking. I drew my short sword and leaped at the giant toad. <laughs> Aqua squatted on the ground in front of me, hugging her. Hugging her knees. She was dripping with slime. Ew. Next to her lay the giant toad, its head split open. Thank you, Cosma. Thank you. <laughs> she hadn't stopped crying since I pulled her from the toad's mouth. I guess even goddesses don't like being eaten. Well, duh. No one would like being eaten. Except for probably darkness. <laughs> oh, God. When I get to her lines. Oh, no. It's alright, Aqua. Take it easy. Hey, let's go home for today. The quest was to kill five toads in three days. But we've obviously in over our heads. Let's go get some more gear first. I mean, I've got a short sword and a track, so at least, I'd at least like to look like an adventurer. I'd been able to kill the toad that swallowed Aqua, mainly because giant toads stopped moving when they swallowed their prey. I never would have had the guts to go up against a toad that was happily hopping towards me to attack. But Aqua, her whole body covered in gleaming toad mucus, rose to her feet. Yeah. Yeah, that happened. How can a goddess just allow herself to be brought down to this level by some frog? I've been defiled. If one of my followers saw me now, they'd lose all faith in me. If it got out that I had been laid low by a frog, the reputation of the beautiful and awesome Aqua would be for naught. Uh, hello? You got eaten. Uh, she sweat every day as she lugged around construction loads, thrilled to be able to carry more than a bunch of middle-aged men. She looked forward to nothing more than dinner after a good bath. Every night she slept next to me on a hay bale, drool dribbling down her chin. But cover her in a little frog slime, and now she's worried about appearances? Before I could stop her, Aqua dashed off towards another giant toad in the distance. Whoa, hey wait, Aqua! She ignored me, closing the gap between her and the monster. With all the energy that propelled her, her fist began to emit a white light, and she slammed it into the toad's belly. <sighs> Aqua. You are stupid. Let's see how this goes. Okay. 12 minutes in. Alright. So I had to check and see what the time was. Know the power of the gods. You shouldn't have stood against me and bared your fangs against us. But you'll have time to regret that in hell. God blow. What fangs? Toes don't have they can have teeth. Because they swallow their prey whole. I recalled hearing from a guild employee that physical attacks weren't all that effective against giant toads. Aqua's fist sank into the monster's soft stomach with a glug, and the toad casually looked down at her. Aqua met its eyes. You know, now that I see you up close, I realize how cute giant toads really are. For the second time that day, I set upon a monster immobilized while eating its meal, and for the second time, I rescued a sobbing, slime-covered goddess. We decided to call it a day. The problem is, the two of us alone are totally outmatched. We need some allies. When we get back to town, we've gone directly to the bathhouse. Then we headed to the Adventures Guild where we were eating fried frog legs and holding a war council. The guild hall functioned as both an adventurer's meeting place and a recreation facility. You could buy and sell monster parts and a large tavern served up monster-based dishes. <coughs> We'd gotten two frogs worth of meat today, which we sold to the guild for some pocket change. We could hardly carry back those carcasses ourselves, but the guild offered a transport service for a price. Minus the transport fee, we earned 5,000 arrows for each frog. All told, it was barely more than we've been making in construction. Uh, okay. So, arrows are essentially kind of like yen. Where... It, it takes a lot of money. Because I think uh, 8 million yen is equal to either, I think, $80,000 or something in U.S. dollars. 
So, yeah, I like that. Then again, the fried frog, while a little tough, was way better than I had expected. When I first got to this world, I had been loathe to eat things like lizards or frogs. But it turned out they were pretty good in a combo meal. The guy that was sitting across from me, though, didn't need any encouragement to eat everything that was put in front of her. Sure, but we're brand new adventurers who don't even have any decent gear. What kind of allies would join our party? Aqua waved her fork back and forth, her mouth full of frog legs. Don't worry about it. I'm the one who'll be recruiting. Swallow first, swallow first, then talk. She gulped out her mouth full of food. I'm here. When word gets out, we want party members, they'll come. I'm an archpriest. You know, an advanced class. I can use all kinds of healing magic and cure paralysis and poisoning, even revive the dead. A party wouldn't want me. I might not have anywhere near my full power, thanks to you dragging me down to the mortal realm, but... <clears throat> I'm the great Aqua, aren't I? Pretty soon they'll be knocking at our door. Please let us join you, they'll say. Get it? Now pass me another fried frog leg. With that, she grabbed a leg off my plate, and I looked at the self-proclaimed goddess with a sinking feeling. Oh boy. At the Adventurers Guild the next day, Where are they? Aqua groaned. We posted a notice that we were seeking party members and then set up shop at a table in a far corner of the guild hall. But so far, we've been sitting here for more than half the day, and that one candidate for future hero had shown up. Maybe no one had seen our posting? There were lots of other adventurers looking for party members, but they seemed to have one interview after another, and then, after a friendly chat, would we'll go off somewhere with their new ally. I knew why no one was coming to our table. Maybe we need to lower our standards a little. I get that we're trying to defeat the Demon King here, but the part that says only those of advanced classes need apply is probably putting people off. Uh, but, but, the class system in this fantasy world included what were called advanced classes. Aqua's class Archpriest was an example. It was a stage normal people would never reach because of legend, if you will. And obviously, most everyone with this kind of talent had already found parties. Aqua was probably just looking to get the most powerful people we could to help us take on the Demon King, but... At this rate, no one's going to show up. Anyway, you might be in advanced class, but I have the lowest job there is. How can I hold my head up if my entire party's full of elite characters? Let's cast a wider net, please. As I spoke, I made to stand up, but then... I saw the notice-seeking adventurers of advanced classes. Is this the right place? I met a red eye that looked oddly languid, almost sleepy. Full black hair that just barely reached the shoulders. The girl who'd spoken to us was the very image of a spellcaster. Black mantle and black robe, black boots, a staff, even a pointy hat. She had doll-like features, one of those Lolita types. I knew it wasn't unusual in this world for children to work, but this girl couldn't have been more than 12 or 13. She was short and wore a patch over one eye, and suddenly she threw back her mantle and declared, I am Megamine. I am the of the occupation Arch Wizard, one who wields the most powerful of all offensive magic. Explosion! Oh god, <laughs> this girl... Oh god, she's nothing about a darkness, though. <laughs> Are you messing? Because at least she can do damage! I'll be it once a day, but she can do damage. Are you messing with us? I, I am not! She didn't seem to expect me to dismiss her self-introduction. And what was with that name, anyway? The Red Eye. Are you one of the Crimson Mage Clan? Or Crimson, Ma Crimson Magic Clan. I cannot talk. The girl nodded at Aqua's question and passed her adventurer's card to Aqua. Indeed I am. I am Megamine, first among the spellcasters of the Crimson Magic Clan. My ultimate magic can level mountains and shatter stone. Y you don't have and I need an exceptional magic user, do you? And if you'll pardon my asking, could you give me something to eat before we start the interview? I haven't had a bite to eat in three days. She looked at us pleadingly. How are you even walking around? You should be not be able to walk around because you're so weak from hunger. At the same moment, her stomach gave a loud gurgle. I don't mind trading you, I said, but what's with the eye patch? If you're injured, Aqua here can heal you. Heh, <laughs> this is a magic item that restrains my incredible power. If I removed it, why then a great calamity will come upon us work. Dramatics, girl! Wow, really? So it's like some kind of seal. Oh no, I made all that up just now. I just think it looks cool. Ow, oh, I'm so sorry, please stop. Please don't pull on it. Alright, let me fill in, Kazuma, Aqua said as I tugged on Megamine's eye patch. These kids, the Crimson Magic Clan, are born with exceptionally high intelligence and magic, making it easy for them to become expert spellcasters. They're distinguished by their red eyes, which gives them their name and, well, their weird personal names. 
Yeah! Mega Man! We finally get our third party member! And then darkness is gonna show up soon. Oh no. I am so glad you guys cannot see my camera. Because more than likely it'll make me blush just reading the, her lines and possible image popping in my head. Huh? I thought she was just teasing me about the eye patch and the name. I let the patch go and Mega Man collected herself. Weird names indeed. From my perspective, it is everyone else in town who has a weird name. Out of curiosity, what were your parents' names? Uh. Pardon me if I can't pronounce these. My mother's name is Yui Yui. My father, Hayao Saboro. Uh, I probably butchered that. Uh, Quinn and I looked at her in silence. Well, anyway, you said this kid's people turned out a lot of great magic users. How about we take her then? Hey, if you have something to say about my parents' names, let me hear it. Mega Bean shoved her face up close to mine. Aqua quickly returned her adventurer's card. Why not? You can't forge an adventurer's card, and this girl is definitely an arch wizard, an advanced class capable of powerful offensive magic. If she can really use explosion, then that would be a big deal. That's supposed to be one of the most difficult magic to master. Hey, Megamine said hotly, you do not have to call me this girl all the time. Use my name. I passed her a menu. Calm down and order anything. Order something. I'm Cosma. This is Aqua. Pleasure to meet you, Archwizard. Megamine looked like she was about to say something, then silently took the menu. Uh, let me check this again. Eh, I can continue. Explosion is the most powerful of magics, but it takes time to prepare in proportion to its power. I will need you to hold that toad at bay until I am ready. Aqua, the now stated Megamine, and I had come to get some revenge on the giant toads. We could see one of them far off across the field. It had noticed us and was coming closer. But we could also see other toads approaching from the opposite direction. Use your magic to target the one that's farther away. After the closer ones, well, here we go, Aqua. Time to get our payback. You keep telling me you used to be, you know, why don't you show me what you can do? What do you mean, used to be? It's present tense. I am a goddess. I'm just an archpriest for now. Megamine gave the self-proclaimed goddess a strange look as Aqua strangled me with tears flying from her eyes. A uh, goddess? Is what she calls herself. Poor kid, sometimes she just lets it slip, you know. Don't pay her any attention. As I spoke, Megamine looked sympathetically at Aqua. The tearful Aqua made a fist and lunged desperately at the nearest frog. Whatever, I know giant toads are supposed to be resistant to physical attacks, but this time I'm going to show you what a goddess can do. Just you watch, Cosmo. I didn't get my glory last time, but today... With that, Aqua, who seemed to have learned nothing from her previous foray into a frog's digestive system, ceased to move and stalled the giant toad in her own way. Only a true goddess would sacrifice herself to buy her ally some time. That was when the air around Megamine began to tremble. Even I, who didn't know what the first th know the first thing about magic, could see that what Megamine was cooking up was serious stuff. Her voice grew louder as she chanted the incantation, and a single head of sweat rolled down her bead of sweat rolled down her forehead. Behold, the most powerful magic known to mankind. This is truly the ultimate attack magic. The end of Megamine's staff began to glow. The vast light condensed until it was tiny but piercingly bright. Megamine's red eye glowed as she opened it wide. Explosion! I <laughs> don't laugh at me for doing that. A single beam of light flew across the field, it raced from the end of her staff, and enveloped the frog that was coming in our direction. Then I saw the effect of this dire magic. The frog burst into tiny pieces with a light bright enough to see your head spinning and a roar that shook the air. I planted my feet and covered my eyes against a shockwave that threatened to send me flying. When the smoke cleared, a 20-meter-wide crater lay where the creature had been, speaking to the awesomeness of the blast. Incredible! So this is magic. At the moment, while I was admiring Megamine's spell, a giant toad, perhaps awakened by the sound and the shockwave, crawled up from under the ground. They come out from under the ground. <sighs> I'd been wondering how the toads survived in an area without rainfall or a major water source, but I'd never thought they might do it by living underground. The toad was crawling out near Megamine, but moving very slowly. I just had to get her back far enough to prepare another explosion. Megamine, let's fall back, then we can hit him again. That was when as far as I got before I saw Megamine and stopped in my tracks. She had collapsed. My magic is utterly powerful, 
but it takes strength equal to its power. I've overexerted myself and will not be able to moving for a while. Oh, who could have known a toad would appear right near me? This is trouble. I shall be eaten. Please help me. I finished off the two toads Megamine and Aqua had immobilized. And so it was that we did actually kill five giant toads in three days. Quest successful. <laughs> yeah, barely. It stinks. My clothes stink. A whimpering slime-covered aqua trudged behind me. The inside of a giant toad smells bad, but it's rather cozy and warm. Add that to the list of things I never really wanted to know firsthand. The equally slime-covered megamine was perched on my back, offering up facts I myself didn't really want to know. It turns out that when a spellcaster uses a spell that goes beyond the limits of her MP, she makes up the difference out of her HP. You use a major spell when your mana is running low, and it could even put your life at risk. Not good. Save your explosions for emergencies from now on, Megamine, I said. You should stick to smaller stuff most of the time. I felt her hand resting on my shoulder clench. I can't. Huh? I said dumbly. You can't what? I gri she gripped my shoulder even harder. I, I felt her small chest pressing against my back. I can't use anything but explosion. I'm completely incapable of casting any other spells. You're kidding. No, I am not. Hold on, doesn't she get more points if she levels up or has she hit her level limit? If she's hit her level limit, then of course she can't learn any other magic. But if she's not hit her level limit and she levels up, she could possibly learn any other magic. But obviously we know she's not going to. She refuses to. Megamin and I fell silent. Uncle, who had been quietly sniffing in the background the whole time, finally saw fit to enter the conversation. What do you mean you can't use anything but explosion? If you have enough skill points for that, surely you have enough to learn other spells, too. Skill points? Oh, yeah. The girl with the gill said something about points being connected to learning skills. Aqua saw my expression and explained. You get skill points when you choose a class, and you use them to learn abilities. The better you are, the more points you start with, and you can allocate them to various skills. For example, I am very exceptional, so I started by learning all the, particle, all the party part party trick skills than all the magic appropriate to an archpriest. What are party tricks skills for? Aqua ignored my question. The types of skills a person can learn are limited by their class and personality, she went on. For example, someone who hates water would have to spend more points to learn ice or water related skills or, in a worst case scenario, might not be able to learn them at all. Explosive magics are part of the category called multi-type magic because they rely on a deep knowledge of both fire and air magic, among others. Someone can, who can learn a spell from the explosive magics should have no problem learning other elemental magic. In other words, there's no reason you should be able to use an advanced spell like explosion and not easier spells. I paused. So, when and where does one use party trick skills? From my back, Megamin whispered. I am an archwizard who adores explosion above all else. I do not care for all the explosive magics. Explosion is my only love. I was starting to wonder what made explosion different from any other explosive magics. I had no idea, but Aqua seemed to be taking Megamine's declaration of uniqueness quite seriously. Actually, you know what? The thing about party trick skills bugged me even more than, since, than the somatics of uh, magically blowing stuff up. Of course, it might be easier for me to go adventuring if I took other skills... Even abilities in the basic elements of fire, water, earth, and air would help me. But I cannot. I love only explosion. Even if with my present MP I can cast it only once a day. Even if I collapse after casting it, it does not matter. I love only explosion. Indeed, I chose the path of the Archwizard merely and solely so I could cast that one spell. Incredible, Aqua said. Just wonderful. When I see, so see you pursuing something so utterly impractical and yet so romantic, I move to tears. Well, this was no good. Looked like this mage had decided to specialize in being useless. The ultimate proof was that Aqua sympathized with her. Our recent battles with the giant toes had left me doubting whether this goddess was going to be any help to me at all. To be blunt, Aqua was a liability all by herself. To take on another problem child, alright, I'd made up my mind. Wow, is that so, I said. Well, it won't be an easy road, but stay strong. Oh hey, there's a town. When we get to the guild, let's split the reward three ways. And then, who knows? Maybe we'll meet again someday. As I spoke, Megamine's grip on my shoulder tightened. <laughs> my one desire is to let off explosion. Any reward is merely a bonus. I do not need an equal share. 
Give me enough for a motel and a bath and some necessities, and I will ask nothing further. Yes, you could have me an arch wizard for hardly more than the price of a meal. Could you do anything other than take me on long term under such conditions? <laughs> oh, we couldn't. Such phenomenal power would be wasted on a small fry party like ours. Pearls before swine, you know. A regular spellcast would be perfect for a couple of novices like us. Look at me. I'm the lowest possible class. As I spoke, I tried desperately to loosen Magamine's grip on my shoulder so I could send her on her way as soon as we reached the guild hall. Megamine tried desperately to hold on. And not at all. I don't mind in the least if this is a weak or inexperienced party. I may belong to an advanced class, but I am a novice myself. I am only level 6. She has not reached her level limit! I am sure that with a few more levels, I will stop collapsing every time I cast a spell, right? So please, stop trying to put my hand away. I mean, she's got a point. If she keeps leveling up, she'll eventually get more mana. And maybe... Maybe she'll be able to cast it and not collapse sometime. Maybe. But that's probably a while away. No, 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 no. A ca spellcaster who can only cast one spell a day? That's hardly user-friendly. Who would have thought that a mage could have such a strong grip? Hey, Lego, you've probably been kicked out of other parties too, haven't you? Think about it. If we go into a dungeon, you won't be able to use your explosion in a confined space like that. You won't be able to help us at all. Hey, Lego already. Don't worry, we'll give you the reward from this quest. Now let go. Please don't abandon me. No other party will take me. When we go into a dungeon, I can I can carry your bags for you. I'll do anything. I'm begging you. Please don't leave me. Maybe it was the girl on my back shouting, please don't abandon me, at the top of her lungs that attracted the looks and whispers of passerby. By now, we were already in town. Usually just Aqua alone was enough to gather a crowd, so we must have released it out. Oh my goodness, that man is going to abandon that poor girl. What's all over that woman next to him? Is that slime? He made such a young girl his plaything, and now he's just going to throw her away? Disgusting. Look, both those girls are slimy. What kind of sick games is that perv playing with them? Oh, God. I seem to be the subject of a major misunderstanding. I hated the way Akko smirked when she heard those comments, and then it turned out Megami to picked up on them, too. As I looked over my shoulder at her, her mouth twisted, then opened. I'll play whatever games you want. I'll even put up with the slime play you showed me with those giant toads earlier. Alright, alright, enough. Welcome aboard, Megamine. Okay, with that, I think I'm going to end off this reading, and I will see everybody next time.